Welcome to our worship on a Wednesday. You are very welcome wherever you are watching this. Our theme today is Calm the Storm. Our call to worship. In the midst of life's storms, God is there. What do we fear? In the darkness and terror, God is with us. Of whom shall we be afraid? Rise up, people of God, for you are loved and saved. Thanks be to God, who cares deeply for us. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Your Love Never Fails. in prayer. Jesus Christ, presence of peace 
in the storms and conflicts of life. Source of calm amidst our troubles and anxieties. In your liberating power, the fearful find courage. The oppressed find release. The indebted find forgiveness. The lowly are lifted up. The mighty are levelled down. Come to us now in your power and in your peace. Amen. Our first reading is from Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Christ alone, cornerstone, Weak made strong in the Saviour's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. We sing our second hymn, Cornerstone.
come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne A member of the congregation was walking out of church after the service one Sunday morning and stopped to compliment the minister on his sermon, saying, Reverend, your words today were like the peace and love of God. Thank you, responds the minister. Why do you say that? The parishioner explained, because the peace of God passes all understanding and the love of God endures forever. I'm not quite sure that's what the minister wanted to hear, but it does speak to one of my favourite Bible verses. As we heard in the Philippians reading, verses 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends, or in some translations, surpasses all understanding. The original Greek word used here for peace, irene, is defined as one, peace, quietness or rest. It's a blissful relaxing, much like the carefree sleep of a child who has no worries because all their concerns are handled. It is not used here in the grand way of peace when we think about wars or battles, more in reference to a state of mind. When we think about something that surpasses all understanding, it is something that is far above the norm, vastly beyond the regular. For the church in Philippi, accustomed to conflict and trouble, the promised peace of God would have not only been desirable, but something they could scarcely begin to imagine. For anyone that knows me well, they will know that I am quite an anxious person, a person that worries about a lot of things. But I'm sure we've all experienced anxious times. Mind, the mental health charity, defines anxiety as what we feel when we are worried or afraid particularly about things that are about to happen or which we think could happen in the future. I have lots of little tools in my toolbox to help calm me. I have apps on my phone for practicing mindfulness. At work, I make sure to get up at regular intervals to have a break and to take some deep breaths. I go for walks after work to get exercise and to help my mental health that way. 
One of the other things that helps is playing my cornet. I can forget my worries and just play music. It does somehow feel different, more peaceful or calming to play in a service or to play worship music than it does to play in a secular band. I think it's because we are playing to bring glory to God. One of the most important tools in my toolbox is prayer. To have that ability to pray to God and present my worries and fears to him and to have him be someone that can give me that calming, all-encompassing peace which exceeds anything we can understand is an incredible thing. As the old Sunday school song says, cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. As it says in the Philippians reading, those who choose prayer and trust the Lord during times of anxiety will experience the peace of God. This peace offers important positives. God's peace is supernatural and unexplainable. It is truly amazing how God can and will respond during times of difficulty. When I am feeling anxious or worried, it is like an internal storm. This always reminds me of the story of Jesus calming the storm. So we look at our second reading from Mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Are you caught in an unexpected storm on the sea called life? Jesus can calm the storm that is within you. The disciples called upon Jesus in the midst of their storm, and we must do the same. He promises to hear and answer our prayers when we do. Just as the disciples asked Jesus for help in their storm, as it said in our Philippians reading, we too must make our requests known to him. When the disciples told Jesus about their fears, he spoke to the storm and it ceased. There can be peace in the midst of our storms too. I talked about my toolbox that I use to help calm me. Another tool I have is all the incredible hymns and songs that we have at our disposal. I often find myself singing some hymn or worship song and that helps to calm me and to find peace. One of my favourites was introduced to me by my mum, who used to play it at their house group. The tune is by English composer Margaret Reeser. Born in 1929, Margaret studied opera singing and went on to become a composer, mainly of Christian choral music and Tese chants. In her hymn, Calm me, Lord, she takes David Adams' words and sets them to her own music. The words reference the reading we have just heard 
about Jesus calming the storm. Calm me, Lord, as you calm the storm. Still me, Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, with your peace. It is so, those simple words that I often find myself singing in difficult times and that bring such inner calm and peace. Let's listen to it now.
And so I close in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, it's so easy to fall into worry. When our fears are going round in our minds, help us to stop trying to fix everything ourselves. Teach us to turn to you in prayer. Trust you to be in charge and let your peace reign over us. In Jesus' name, Amen. For our closing blessing, I could think of nothing more appropriate than to take one of the most well-known benedictions that mentions peace. The priestly blessing as found in Numbers 6. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.